Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we're going to talk about the VNAV in the fly-by-wire A32NX. This is of course a big deal, I've been asked about it a lot and everyone is very excited to see it finally start to appear in this mod. So well done to the fly-by-wire team, it is a hugely complicated thing and we can see that by how long it's taken for it to come, which is not through lack of effort from fly-by-wire, they've been working incredibly hard on it, but it's actually because it's such a complex feature that a lot of calculations go into. And today we're going to talk about that and see the state it is in at this early stage. It is only in the experimental version of the A32NX at this moment in time. And there is a reason for that and we're going to talk about it now. So it is not a fully functioning VNAV just yet, but it is a, a very impressive display of the fly-by-wire team's hard work and the progress they are making with it. So we're going to talk about it and how it applies to real-world flying. I am of course a real-world Airbus pilot, but none of this is for any real-world use. It's just to give you some extra context on your home simulations. We're going to take off from here at London Gatwick, fly a SID out of here, a standard instrument departure where we'll get to see some VNAV at work and then we're going to make an arrival into London Heathrow to see uh, the same thing and there's a reason I've chosen those airports, we'll talk about that in the video. So I'd just like to remind you of our partnership with Apex Gaming PCs where we have a line of custom 320 Simpilot PCs that you can also customise yourself on the website, if you do buy one you'll be supporting the channel and you can get a 5% discount with the code 320 Simpilot. Now let's talk about what exactly VNAV is. It's called VNAV for the reason it is vertical navigation. So there's two sorts of navs we have in aeroplanes, commercial airliners these days, and that is LNAV, lateral navigation, which would be the green line that you follow on your navigation display, which is your route over the earth. And then you've got VNAV or vertical navigation, which is something we can't see on this sort of airplane on the screen, but it's our uh, altitude profile and it also includes our speeds. And there's a reason for that, which we'll talk about later on. So it is uh, a more complicated feature than simply drawing the line of where you want to go because it has to take into account a lot of things including aircraft performance. So how is the aeroplane going to climb? How fast will it climb? How long will it take? And that will be affected by things like the weather, the wind, the aeroplane weight, uh, the humidity, the density altitude, the temperature compared to ISA. Is the engine anti-icing on or off? Because that will affect engine performance. We'll have less performance if we need to use the icing systems. There's a whole host of things that go into the aircraft's vertical performance and that is true of the climb and the descent and that's why earlier when I said this is a hugely complicated thing to implement it really is on top of all of the things I've mentioned there and there'll be plenty of other problems as well or complications I should say we also have the factors of planned limits so SIDS and STARS standard instrument departures standard terminal arrivals will feature uh, prescribed limitations speed limits that we must be at and we need to know whether they'll work so we have the airplane tell us so part of uh, a modern flight deck of having just two pilots is that a lot of these calculations can be done by the airplane now we back them up ourselves of course and we make gross error judgments on these things which means we're just looking to see the big picture will this roughly work to within an acceptable margin the airplane will work to a very granular level of detail on these calculations because it is after all that it does contain a big computer so it's very good at that which is not something we need to be so concerned about to the same level of detail but it is a very handy feature like i say the airplane will in its vertical plan take into account wind weight temperature it's fantastic but there are some things it will miss most importantly in the descent so first of all let's take a look at the first aspect of vertical navigating which is starting on the ground we need to go up so let's talk about the climb and how that is going to um, be affected by uh, having VNAV. Now we don't call it VNAV in the Airbus, that's not really um, how we, we refer to it. It's called managed mode. So we have two modes in the Airbus, um, you've got selected and managed. So selected is when you see these dashed lines, that is letting the aeroplane decide. Um, however, the altitude window will never say that, so we'll find it on our PFD and I'll show you what modes we're expecting later. But effectively letting the aeroplane choose its climb uh, or descent profile. Selected is when we tell it to climb or descend in a certain way. So what we're talking about today really is a managed climb and a managed descent where we let the aeroplane control the rates of descent, the accelerations, decelerations and so on. So we're going to take off from London Gatwick 08 right and I'm going to bring up the charts. Oh, in fact I already had it pinned, look at me, very organised for once. And there we are, 08 right and we're going to fly this SID, standard instrument departure. Now this is a very common one, Gatwick is a busy airport, lots of you have probably flown on one of these departures out of Gatwick before. Uh, if you've gone on holiday from there. Now, what we're looking at, and the reason I've cho chosen this SID, is it has some vertical constraints. You can see here at Acorn, it's written in blue, 
with a line above and below 5,000 feet. So that means we must be at 5,000 feet at Acorn, not above and not below. And so far, so normal, as a lot of departures have something like that at some point. But what's interesting about this one, and a lot of the Gatwick ones, is that they hold you at 5,000 feet exactly, not above, not below, at 5,000, and then they hold you at 6,000. So from 15 miles from the Lambon VOR, which is up here, we're heading towards it, we need to be at 5,000 feet. Five miles later, we must be at 6,000 feet. Okay, so that's the, the first limitations. You'll also notice here cross noise monitoring terminal. So at a minimum of 1210 thereafter maintain a noise a minimum climb grain at 4% to 3000 feet due to noise abatement. So this stuff's in here as well, but that's a complication not to concern yourself with too much. So this is unusual because of the stepped climb it's called where we expect to climb up without their traffic control telling us we we'll just do that. That's part of our departure. If we've been cleared for this departure, that's what we're expected to do. That's just a starting point. So that's going to be a good test of VNAV or managed climb because I'm going to expect the airplane to do that on its own. So let's load in that departure into the box. Okay, so here it is loaded into the MCDU, Lambord 5 Papa. We're going to take off uh, and then it's also written down here, by the way, straight ahead to 3.5 IGG. Then you make a left turn 051 track. So we can check all that in the waypoints. It's got 052, but that's close enough. Uh, but crucially, you see these little magenta asterisks. This tells me this is in the vertical navigation column, the altitude profile of the, the computer, uh, because it's on the right of this slash. So on the left is speeds that it expects to be, and on the right is the altitudes it expects to be, or flight levels later on. So what I can see, if I click on this one here, 3940, I can see a restriction. What it's telling me is the altitude it expects to be at, but it's telling me there's a restriction. If we select it next to it, we can see what restriction it has, altitude constraint, plus 1210. Now this I think is related to this noise monitoring which I'm not sure how it would be coded in the real aircraft but that's what that is. Another thing to note is this is a magenta asterisk which tells me there is a restriction and we're going to make it. The airplane is happy that it will be above that altitude and therefore is not an issue. If we didn't think it would make it it would actually be an amber. You'd have an amber asterisk and in that case you'd still see on the right the altitude it thinks it will be but you could click on it and you can see the constraints and you'll be able to see that you won't be able to make it. So in some departures you'll see uh, places with high terrain right in front of the runway for example and there might be a restriction closer in. So let's say, I don't know, five miles from Detling it wanted us to be at, uh, uh, sorry, um, not 20 miles, uh, let's say we were just sort of, I don't know, 10 miles off the runway and it wants us to be at 6,000 feet or something really high. Um, if we had that restriction in there we'd get a little uh, amber asterisk instead. Okay, so it's telling us what it thinks it can be, and then it's telling us if we can make it. So this is a clever piece of coding, and well done to the fly-by-wire team for getting it in there, because it needs to take into account your weight and things like the wind. So if we don't have the wind loaded in like this, um, potentially that won't work. If I was to now load in a tailwind, uh, let's, I wonder if it will work actually. Now as far as I can tell, for now, this doesn't take into account the winds either. So if I was to go to init uh, and the wind, you should really have the wind loaded in here. Uh, and the reason for that is um, if you put it in, then it will uh, take that into account on these constraints. It's very clever in the real aircraft, but uh, I've tried that and put in the wind. It didn't seem to make uh, much difference. So we'll see if that comes later or maybe I'm doing something wrong in the way this, uh, this is set up at the moment. But there we go. So that is another thing that it takes into account. It's a clever, clever and a very reliable system in the, the real aircraft and it's, it's on its way here. So that's what these magenta asterisks tell us. Okay, so next, let's look at the restrictions later on. So 5,000 feet at Acorn. Well, here's the point Acorn. It's got a little asterisk. Let's click on it. 5,000. It doesn't say plus or it doesn't say minus because that would mean we could be above or below. It says at. Great, that's correct. Next, I'm looking for 10 miles from Lambourne at 6,000 feet. So that'll be J uh, because it's this is not necessary for you to know, but A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. J is the 10th letter in the alphabet. Uh, so that is 10 miles from Lambourne. That's just the way things are coded. We can select that. Out constraint, 6,000 feet. At. That's great. And it's magenta. So what's good is it thinks it can climb from 5,000 feet to 6,000 feet in that five mile gap, which on two engines, it probably can. So that is good news. So all looking good so far. That is good enough for us to head out. You'll see as well after that, another VNAV sort of point, we've got speed limit. Uh, it doesn't tell you the speed, but it's actually a 250 knot limit. This is loaded in automatically on Airbuses all around the world. So this limit is going to mean that the airplane will accelerate. Instead of accelerating to its uh, economical or its planned climbing speed, it will actually only accelerate to 250 knots 
until the speed limit point, which is at flight level 100. So it's based on flight level 100. When you get past that, it will then accelerate to the en route or the normal cruising, sorry, climbing speed, uh, which in this case looks to be about 290 knots. Um, and then you see our top of descent point. So just to prove it is already in there and working, <laughs> but we'll see that later on in the video. Just to hopefully make this as clear as possible, um, if we put the ND to plan, zoom in, and let's just go flight plan and just scroll through. You can see there, it does a little left, right. And another important point about these constraints in VNAV is that you can actually press CT CSTR up here in plan mode. And that is why we select this mode by default on takeoffs and descents. And it will appear on the plan display, which will help us confirm that this makes sense. And it's actually slightly easier than counting through the alphabet on your fingers like I did earlier. <laughs> and there's the next one. Um, so here's another good little piece of information for us. It says, it doesn't show us a level of arrow, which is, well, actually, no, it does. It shows us a magenta level of arrow here, uh, which means it thinks it's going to reach 5,000 feet just after this first turn. So it thinks it will reach 5,000 just about here on, on the, the route. Then it's going to stay there as we asked it to, or as the plan asks it to, until it reaches this point, the last 5,000 foot restriction. So we are going to pass that point at 5,000 feet, and then it's got a blue climb arrow because it's expecting to climb, and then it's going to level off again at 6,000 feet at the D157J, or otherwise known as 10D from Lambourne. So that's another way we can confirm the VNAV is working, and that will become more important in the descent. The next bit is what are we going to set in the window? Because I said earlier that in managed modes we have dashes like this, but we are going to be uh, setting a managed climb so does that have dashes no there's no way if you, to have dashes in this window if I push it in it doesn't change it to dashes that's because the Airbus will level off at this altitude whatever you do uh, in most situations there are some ways to break that but uh, yeah we put in an altitude here it will stop at that altitude so it wouldn't be against the rules it wouldn't be uncommon to set 5,000 feet initially just in case the managed mode doesn't work like you expect or you, something else happens I don't know but you could end up putting 5,000 in the window and then it will level off at 5,000. If you do that, it will not try and climb. It will not be able to climb above that window. It will stay in climb mode and it will then just level off and capture out and it won't be able to leave it and to climb up to six. So that's fine. And what we could do is leave it at five until we get to this point and then set six and let it climb up on its own, all in managed climb. Or I can set six in the window now and then I would expect it to climb to five, stay there and then climb to six. Uh, and we won't have to touch it at all. We're just going to let it do it. So that is effectively going to be managed climb. Now, what is managed climb mode? Well, as an FMA, it's this. It's climb. So that's blue at the moment. It will turn to green after takeoff. This is the vertical mode column. So that is climb. That is correct. And that is going to arm and then take over. We typically, in the A320, climb in managed climb. Uh, in the sense, it, things vary a little bit more, but in climb, managed climb is normal. I get asked a lot, what is the difference in the Airbus between managed climb and managed uh, and open climb? Well, there isn't really a lot, except for these sorts of fiddly restrictions on the departure. Once we get past all these restrictions, uh, then there's not much else to it. The uh, airplane wants to climb at maximum climb thrust as quickly as possible up to its cruising altitude. So that's what it will do in managed climb, unless there's other restrictions from the, the charts or the air traffic control. It's important to note as well that this speed limit is not uh, going to be affecting that. It's just affecting the speed. So if I pull open climb after takeoff instead of managed climb, so if we were to take off and forget managed climb and just pull the hit altitude, the airplane will just go open climb, it will go to climb thrust, and it will then climb at the speed. But it will still obey the speed limit point. That is not the same thing. It is slightly separate. Um, so I hope it's not too confusing. But uh, yeah, typically... In the Airbus, we climb in managed climb, uh, unless air traffic control suddenly say to us, unrestricted climb, flight level 200, then we would simply set 200 and pull it to override these restrictions that are now in the, the box. FMA awareness, as ever, is key to flying uh, any commercial airliner. So we need to know that we are going to stop at the right place. We know, as I've said many times now, 5,000 feet is our initial stop altitude. And here is 5,000 feet in magenta. So that is showing up correctly, even though we've set 6,000 in the window over here. And that is a key difference of a managed climb at this stage. If we were to set 5,000 in the window like that, it will turn to blue because we've overridden it. It's not a stop altitude because of the computer it's a stop altitude because we've told it hence it's blue that's a key difference magenta is an airplane decided thing blue is going to be us overriding it uh, when it comes to the altitudes only with the fmas different thing they change to green and all sorts 
So that's enough talking. We're going to take off and we're going to let the airplane in managed mode. I'm going to do nothing to it and we're going to let it fly this departure and check that it does obey those and we'll see if these level off points work for us. Let's get going. Okay, so here we go then. We are shortly going to reach the acceleration phase. So it says leave a climb as normal and it's engaged climb in green. So nose to the flight directors, as they should have been really anyway. Uh, thrust levers back to climb. So now we have thrust climb, climb, auto thrust, and we will accelerate. So I'm just gonna engage an autopilot here so I can talk to you. So what have we got now? So climb mode is now green, not open climb, it is climb. So it is gonna climb up to 5,000 feet. Now. Oh, we're going to get air traffic control. It's all just a lot now. So this is all good. Um, but remember, we want 6,000 feet in that window because we're going to do a managed climb. So there we go. We've got out magenta armed and 5,000 magenta. A normal way to take off, quite common, is to have this out blue armed now and 5,000 blue. Some sort of um, not, a, not a restricted climb, as it were. Uh, but this is an unusual one at Gatwick. Right, there we go. Flaps to zero. Disarm the ground spoilers. And take off the nose with your lights so there we go out magenta it's got the level off arrow in magenta if we were to do this in open climb that would be in blue because it would be what we're choosing to do but this is a magenta we're also going to see out constraint engage instead of out capture it's an out constraint so it's going to tell us that it's leveling off there because of a constraint in the plan there it is speed out constraint and it's going to level off at 5,000 feet uh, instead of the normal out where it would level off at uh, the altitude just because of the window. So these are the key differences and this is why I've chosen this departure to, to talk about with it. But that arrow was very good, that predicted level off was pretty accurate and it's very good in the real aeroplane. It updates a lot and it tends to work. So now we are continuing on that departure and remember at any point here it wouldn't be uncommon for air traffic control to let us climb higher. Uh, it's, this is a rare sort of thing to have to do to fly level for so long and uh, not have a further climb. So if air traffic now said to us climb immediately unrestricted to flight level 100 then all we would do is set 100 and pull. We would force it into what we know as open climb where it will go to climb thrust. But as it is, we're going to carry on and let it decide these things. So next, it's going to climb up 5,000 feet to 6,000 feet as we pass this D1570 point. So we're going to accelerate to there and see what happens. You'll notice as well on the PFD, again, highly important to check this, climb is armed in blue. It is the armed mode. So that is ready. The airplane is ready to climb. Hence, we have the arrow there. Once we get to that point, I would expect to see it uh, show another level of arrow shortly after when it knows we're going to reach 6-0. Here we go then, arriving at the restriction. So we should still see it uh, do the same thing and climb up. But remember, that 6,000 is what we've actually asked it to. I put that in because that's the, the highest clear level on my departure. But let's prove the, the point. Let's put something higher in. We'll put in, let's put in flight level 100. But we can't set standard yet. I know it happens to be the same today, but we mustn't set standard yet because we want to level off at uh, the altitude of 6,000 feet as per our chart. I know the airplane says flight level 60. That's because I probably didn't put in the correct uh, transition altitude in the uh, in the computer. But here we go. Also, I was wondering actually, let's look in Perth. Predicted two flight 100. There you go. It has a prediction. Anyway, here we go. Let's not get distracted. So I want to see. There we go. The same thing again. Thrust climb, climb. And then it's got out magenta 6000 because that is another limit on this departure. It is a hard limit coded in to the uh, more than five puppet, 6000 feet. So that's VNAV working all very well. Let's say a traffic control don't make us do that though. They say climb now unrestricted flight level 160. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to set standards. And then I'm going to think, well, this is no good because it's going to stop in a second out constraint at 60. And I want to uh, go to flight level. 160. So how are we going to do this? As we said, 
open climb, thrust climb, open climb, and you'll notice it's the same thing. Uh, it's just going to go to thrust climb and climb at the managed speed. As I said earlier, although we've overridden that constraint, the 250 knot speed limit is still in there. So the airplane will climb at 250 knots to flight level 100 because that is a pretty standard thing. That is what this magenta dot here is telling us. This is called a pseudo waypoint. Uh, the fly by wire team have done some great documentation. Um, but that is a waypoint that will move and it's dynamic. It's based on where the airplane thinks we are going to accelerate from 250 knots, i.e. it is this point here, speed limit. Uh, 250. It should say 250. I think it would say that there. I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, that's why it says little dot. The little dot's telling us it's saying the same thing. 250, 250, 250. So uh, yeah, it that's where it expects to reach it. Now the reason it's over there is because it thinks we'll be at 60 at Lambourne, but we've overridden it now. We're actually going to beat it because I've I've gone into open climb. So we're going to hit flight level 100 in just a moment and I'm expecting the airplane to just lower the nose and accelerate which I think it was doing already but you can now see it drawn onto the nav display although again that should I think that would have moved in the real aircraft um, but there we go airplane accelerating to its en route climb speed you'll notice there's no sort of VDEV scale in the climb there's no deviation from the, what, the vertical plan uh, it doesn't really have much more of a plan now the only thing the airplane wants to do is climb at it's climb speed at thrust climb all out to cruise that's all it's thinking of now uh, and that is where this t slash c point comes from so i've told it flight level 220 for the cruise it's got that written in there and it thinks we'll reach that at 0015 which obviously isn't quite right um, and the speed at which we'll reach it so that is now in there and if we zoom out will it appear it should do we should get a little level off arrow uh, these level off arrows are very useful of course um, because they are used by us when air traffic control says something like oh will you reach uh, this flight level by this waypoint there we go I've managed to get it to show what I did was I just put in 300 in the window and I've told it we're going up to cruising at 300 and there's that level off arrow now in the real aircraft that is very dynamic so if I was to put in a lower level let's say 250 I would expect that arrow to move closer it actually unlike the Boeing's it's not sort of very smooth it doesn't move up and down it will disappear and then reappear where the airplane thinks you can ignore this top descent arrow as I said that is for the return <laughs> this is a line back and forward so uh, yeah so that, that should that blue arrow should move around a bit more it's based on the level I have in the window it's actually showing us the the top of climb at the end of the uh, at the segment so if I was to put it all the way up to 300 it's gonna stay there now again this is not a criticism that's just something I, I I think unless there's an, a patch note I haven't seen which is very possible the other thing that uh, hopefully will be added is if we change the vertical speed so let's say I just tell the airplane to climb at a thousand feet per minute which is quite a slow rate of climb I'd expect the top of climb arrow to move further ahead so that's another thing that could happen so we're now going to move on and talk about descents and VNAV or managed descents in the Airbus this is a big topic and I know the video is quite long so far and we're going to go on for a, another sort of 20 odd minutes as we discuss this um, because it is it is a big topic it's a very dynamic part of the flight and there's a lot of uh, factors that are at play here also this is not complete yet so there may be things that are missing or perhaps more confusing than when it is complete and that's uh, understandable but we will talk about them uh, in a more complete guide later on when it all comes uh, in one piece and it will probably be a little, a little more simple. So my message here just at this halfway point is please don't let this uh, get over complicated in your minds. Um, I'm discussing a lot of things here and a lot of this is just extra context for those of you interested in the way this gets applied in the real world and hopefully that's what it can provide for you. Um, so do please enjoy the rest of the video and like I say we will be revisiting this in the future I'm sure. Now we're going to look at the descent phase of course. So we're now up in the cruise at 30,000 feet, just a little route here to Costa and then back again to do a Logan arrival. So now we're going to arrive back into London Heathrow by the Logan 2 Hotel. I've already loaded this into the MCDU. Here it is through Logan, Sabre, Brasso, Weasel, Lambourne. Now this has constraints again as we can see 250 at Logan, 160 at Sabre, Brasso, Weasel, 250 knots at Weasel and then 70 at Lambourne. So let's just check those are in here and here is what I talked about earlier. We can see there is an altitude constraint at Logan but the airplane wants to be at 242. It won't make it. So if I click on it here it says out constraint flight level 250. So it's got the correct one in there but it thinks it's going to be 840 feet low. 
That is because it's trying to make this restriction at Sabre. Actually, I'm not sure why it's doing this. Sabre wants to be 160 and it thinks it's going to be 1300 feet low. So it's, it's descending too early. I'm not sure why. It's prioritized something else at some point in this arrival. Maybe this 3000 feet. Uh, or it wants to be 3000 at Lambourne, which is just uh, way too low. And I don't know why it's doing that. Um, it shouldn't shouldn't be doing that. I'm not sure. Possibly to do with track miles. So this is what I'm going to discuss. There is a bit of an error in the way it calculates the descent. It doesn't account for speed changes. Uh, and fly by wire have said this. So what happens is it's going to think it has a different track miles to what it actually has. There's no need for it to be at 3,000 feet either at Lambourne. The airplane would see the 7-0 and then it would draw a straight line between the two. Now I did try. There is a transition which it would normally fly. Um, but I, I tried to load that in and it seemed to confuse things. So there are you know this is a work in progress this is the experimental version of the a32nx so i don't expect it to be perfect at all and this is just where we're at so i'm just warning you now if you're going to use it there are lots of ways that it might not work quite as expected but i'm going to discuss some of the basic principles today because we can still see them in action even if we can't quite expect it to fly the perfectly accurate arrival um, and i will try uh, and show you show you that so let's go back to where we were and here we go oh and now it's lost its line there we go right so to cost it and back around so the crucial things we have got is a top of descent arrow this little white down arrow that's where the airplane wants us to descend in the neos or some of the more modern versions of the avionics it will say t slash d reach top of descent reached older airplanes used to say decelerate it, it would just come up and say that on the pfd and it will say it in the scratch pad down here that point is listed in the mcdu it's t slash d top of descent if you need help calculating that yourself, and I would recommend you still do double check it yourself, then of course it's three times your altitude uh, plus about 10 and then you add a bit more for a tailwind. Again, my video on when to descend will cover that. And that is something pilots would account for on their own. They won't just rely on this arrow because it could be wrong for loads of reasons. An error in the coding in here, even in the real aircraft, uh, winds being different, a different arrival potentially. What if we think that there could be a shortcut Then we might want to descend earlier than that arrow just in case as it stands as well because it doesn't account for speed um, you might sometimes see in the plan section lots of sort of swooping lines where it isn't quite making it um, because it, it hasn't quite redrawn itself properly we don't have that problem here because I haven't actually connected it now what I could do let's remove the discontinuity let's see how it handles that so there you go I wonder what it was saying now um, so now it thinks it can be at Lambourne at 101 uh, and it's got an amber constraint but it's, it's going to be 3,000 feet high in this case. Interesting. So I'm not sure what this version is prioritizing, but now we are going to make Sabre at 160. So let's simplify it. Let's leave it like it is now. There's 160 at Sabre, and it's going to make that one. So it's having to be low at Logan to make that 160 at Sabre, and then it's going to decelerate, and so on. That is the other thing I'd like to point out. Uh, there is a speed constraint on the star. Uh, we need to be 250 knots maximum at Wesel. So if we look for Wesel, there it is. And as you can see, a star here. We can click next to it and see the speed constraint instead, 250 knots. So these speed changes should be accounted for in the VNAV. So managed descent should account for those speed changes in its descent planning. I don't think that's currently working either. Um, but these are, you know, all things that are i'm sure it won't take too long to come but they are a work in progress they're doing a fantastic job uh, getting it to this stage certainly so there's our descent arrow there's the constraints and as you probably guessed to make it fly those all we have to do is push manage deads i'll just push this button in um, so you set your new level and then push it in remember unlike the boeings it will not descend from the altitude in here until we tell it to mode uh, and if i put in a lower altitude let's say i put in 250 now let's say a traffic said 250 level at logan it won't actually start the descent even at this descent arrow that's an important thing to note um, it's gonna just sit here at 300 uh, because we're in out cruise mode and as you can see there's no armed mode beneath it it is not ready to do anything else it is just gonna sit here so you're probably wondering well how do we make it descend then let's say air traffic control said to us right now okay descend flight level uh, 250 level at Logan that is our next waypoint we need to head down soon to make it there in theory how are we going to make it do that? Well, we could, of course, do our open descent, which would be our non-managed descent. But we're going to use the airplane today. I want the airplane to account for these descent points as best it can. Now, it's not going to quite manage today. In real life, it'd be a little bit better. Um, and what it would actually do in real life, if you had constraints that it wasn't going to make, like it's not going to make um, this first one, it usually says something like uh, 
path too steep or something like that in between waypoints to warn you that it's, it doesn't think it's going to make some of these restrictions. Anyway, air traffic control says that to us now, so I put 250 in the window, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to wait to a bit closer, but all we have to do is push it in, and it will just go into a managed descent. Now, the 250 restriction at Logan, let's see, what is it? Out constraint 250, is it an at 250? It is an at, so the airplane will do exactly like it did on that departure. It will get there, and it will stay there, and it won't do anything different from that. It, it won't let itself be high or low. It will try and aim to be exactly that, which can sometimes cause it an issue because it's not sure it can make the next restriction so we're just going to push forward on this and let the airplane descend itself now do pilots do this in real life is this what we would do yes if we're below profile i would simply click forward push forward and let it go into des and it will say des not open des just des so so far you've probably been using open des now des mode itself managed descent is planned similarly to the climb the ideal descent it wants is a flight idle so the engines to be at idle thrust from the top of so from the cruising level it wants to bring the engines all the way back to idle flight idle all the way down until it gets to about just before a thousand feet when it spools up again ready for landing with the gear and flaps out that's the perfect descent that we can do the most fuel efficient now it's very hard to achieve that especially in busy airspace but that's what the airbus will calculate based on and again it will take into account wind temperature all sorts of other things weight and in this case constraints implied on us by air traffic control or sorry not air traffic control but by the charts that's great and that's what we roughly want it to achieve um, but if we have to go down early because the traffic says descend now but then also be flightable 250 i can just click forwards like this and it goes speed des out blue 250 so i'm letting the airplane do it but what's going to happen is we get this little green donut it's often called some people might call it a yo-yo donut it's quite common this is going to be the desired profile that is what the airplane wants to do so that is starting a descent at this top of descent arrow and following the airplane's planned route so as you can see we've gone low on it likewise if i was to pull open descent right now it will go thrust idle open descent and it, you'll still see that dot but we're going low on it it's no good at all and there's, there's our level off arrow it thinks we'll reach 250 quite quickly the blue level off so let's put it back into des mode uh, and why am I using des mode? Well, I'm below profile, so the airplane will actually maintain a thousand feet per minute until I regain the profile. So this is quite a handy mode. I can just sit here now and the airplane will tell me that I'm low on profile. As you can see, that dot's now above us and it's telling us we're 700 feet below profile and that number will get bigger, 800 feet in a second, 800 feet low. But all of a sudden, when we pass the top of descent marker, that, that planned descent will begin descending and then it will intercept where we are and the aeroplane will then go to idle and descend with it. It's very clever, very handy. So that's a typical way to start a descent if you're below profile. Likewise, this could be below us. This little dot could be down here on this, the altitude tape. I, we've missed our top of descent and we got that top of descent reached message. Now, if that happens, we have a bit of an issue because as you can see on the left, the aeroplane can fly this descent within this speed range. Now this speed range is great and it means that the airplane can account for small changes. Let's say the wind isn't quite right or you use the engine anti-ice. Then it can accelerate slightly or decelerate if things are going a bit uh, in the opposite direction. The downside is, as you can see, the top of this is quite near the red bar and up at 36,000 feet it could be even nearer if not limited by it. You sometimes see this red bar, uh, very common at the start of a descent, it will be right here, maybe at like 300, right next to your actual speed. So if the airplane wanted to be it thinks it's high and tries to lower the nose too much and increase the speed sometimes it can overshoot that top end marker and actually overspeed by the time you're down at 28,000 feet less likely to be an issue but regardless that is a potential risk so if you're high on profile at your top of descent most pilots will do an open descent because as you can see if i do open descent it actually maintains only the target speed i give it at thrust idle it won't let itself go faster i can then select the speed that i'm comfortable with in a more controlled way now let's put them all back into manage. There we go. So speed and des. As you can see, we're 900 feet below the profile now, 800. So we're doing, it's going to raise the nose back to 1,000. We're doing a shallower descent than the airplane would be. So it's going to intercept this uh, little dot and then carry on down to 250 to be level at Logan. Now, if I wind below 250 in des mode, I'll get the uh, magenta mode just like in the climb. You can see that less common in the descent air traffic are usually very prescriptive it's sometimes they say descend with the star but it's very rare so here we go thousand feet per minute des mode 
Thrust idle, there we go, it's intercepting and it's going to lower the nose now at this speed, allowing itself to use this range of speed to fly the most efficient descent. So DES mode is great. It's really good once you get out of those upper levels, um, especially if you're a bit high. You don't want to use it right from the start of a descent if you're already high because it has a risk of overspeed. If you're sitting next to that red bar and you get a sudden change in wind, you'll easily overspeed and it won't be aggressive enough to change it back. And here we go. It's going to level off now at 250. Now again, you can see how early it did it. This is the managed descent and for some reason it wants us down at 250 here. So this is not, this is too, too, too early really. Um, but there we go, 250 speed out star, and we'll let it level off. It's also decelerated to 250 knots too quickly. Um, you can see there it wears away, it has 250, so I would expect to do it, it to do it there if it was left alone to its own devices. Or alternatively, if there was none of this stuff, let's say there were no altitude restrictions and no speed limits, then it would do it at 10,000 feet. Just like in the climb, we would get one of those limit waypoints uh, in, in the MCDU. But it doesn't need one here because, of course, we're already going to be 250 knots because of that a restriction. So as we're high, what I can show you, let's put in uh, 160 at Sabre. And I'll go into DES. And it goes out constraint. And it's <laughs> leveled off at... Yeah, this is interesting. It, 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 I'm really surprised to see this. It's, it's leveled off at uh, 25,000. It, sh it sh shouldn't want to go below that. But if I let it go below, let's say we do thrust idle open descent. It's now going to head down to recapture... Well, it, oh, sorry, it won't do anything now. It's going to head down in thrust idle open descent at 250 knots. It's a, this is a totally uncomputed mode. But what we do get on our navigation display is this little da uh, zigzag. This is where it thinks it's going to regain the profile. Um, this line is surprisingly... I don't find it particularly useful in the real aircraft. Um, you get a sense of whether you're closing on this altitude or not based on what you're doing. So I know right now that... I'll be fine because I'm, I know we're already low. But in terms of making this restriction, do I think we're going to accelerate to meet it? Well, not if I stay at 250 knots thrust idle because that's probably what this descent was planned on. So here I could consider accelerating, pull the speed, lower the nose, the airplane will lower the nose and then vertical speed increases and then we'll more aggressively regain that profile. As we get back towards it, I can just manage the speed. No, oh, there we go. It seems to, yeah, there seems to be some some bugs in this rubber. There we go, back to 250, and then we can uh, let it carry on. Now, this jumping up and down is another bug, fly by wire. I know about. Um, it's it's not something you would see in the real aircraft. That the this donut is quite reliable. The only reason it will move up or down suddenly, the only reason it might jump, is if you were to change the arrival routing in the, the MCDU. If you were to change that, then it would recalculate and redraw that dot. So sometimes, let's say you suddenly got a change in runway, then you might change all this around and the dot will suddenly move. Let's say we were thinking we were very um, low on profile, like we, we were too low and the dot was way above us, and then suddenly we get a change in runway or a shortcut, we enter that into the MCDU, suddenly the dot might appear next to us, which is, that's the perfect one. That shows that you judged it correctly and the airplane judged it wrong, and we, uh, we validated our position as being pilots and still, still sitting on the airplane and not letting the computer do it all for us. Here we go then, we've got a nice little blue level off arrow where it thinks we'll reach 160. As you can see, we're getting below profile now, so I'm just gonna go into manage DES. Something of note, in open DES, we can still use manage speed, it works just fine. The only difference is the airplane will stay at idle, whereas if I go into actual speed and DES, it will now um, try and follow this uh, this little donut. It won't reclimb to meet it in this context, by the way. So you can see it's now going to carry on descending. It must not climb. It, uh, I'll be very disappointed if it does. <laughs> um, there you go. It will carry on in a shallow descent until it regains it, as long as you're going to manage this. You'll also notice because it's restricted itself to 250 knots as opposed to a normal descent speed, it won't let itself get fast on that. It's got, you can see it's got a much lower upper limit on the speed, only five knots above. So this can make it hard. If you're already slowed down uh, and there's speed limits in force, like the 250 knots, which isn't in force yet, it's just coded slightly wrong. Um, but if this is the case, you can see it's quite hard to use extra speed. There isn't really any extra speed there. So this is where you'd have to use speed brakes more likely if you thought you were high on profile. If the airplane does think you're high on profile and it doesn't think there's much you're going to do to fix it, then it will say drag required in the MCDU. Or more drag, sorry. What does it say? More drag, drag required? I mean, <laughs> it, it says something about drag. <laughs> something else to note, you can delete restrictions. So we could go into the uh, MCDU, uh, and I'm not sure if this will work in this version, but see the 7,000 feet? I could just change that or delete it. Let's say we wanted it to be 8,000 feet at uh, 
Lamborn. I can just put that in there and it should recalculate its descent accordingly. Likewise, I could change the speed to 250 knots. Uh, and again, it will change. And there you go, 80250 knots. So that is something we, we will do if air traffic control give us a different clearance, uh, something like that. Um, or maybe we just don't think what this has got loaded is sensible. Um, and we might modify it and then ask our traffic control if we can have that instead, something like that. So it's still our responsibility. We can't offload all of the descent planning to the aircraft. We need to have a good idea of our descents and whether we're getting high or low, regardless of what all of this information is saying. The airplane can't tell or can't expect a change in runway or anything like that. We have to know if we're gonna get shortcut, if the wind is worse than we thought or more of a tailwind, if there's anti-ice on. Remember, turning on the anti-ice in the real aircraft will increase the um, idle point of the engine so they will have more thrust on uh, they have to do that when you're running engine anti-ice or wing anti-ice so if you're using that for the whole descent that's going to get you a few hundred feet off profile and if the airplane was deciding to or trying to plan a fully idle descent and you're going to give it anti-ice then that's going to mess it up it's going to be high and you're going to have to do something about that it's our responsibility so managed descent is it's a great mode and they've done a, an interesting um thing with it in the airbus the way it works Fly by wire done a fantastic job uh, for a first round. This is this has got you know lots of things being worked on already. It's not going to sort out all your descents uh, and let you fly it completely hands off. Um, but then again, in the real aircraft, we rarely do that either. There are some places if you've got a really quiet airport and it is all loaded correctly and coded perfectly, where you might try it. And we will do that in future as that comes to this this uh, mod. But for now, it is a, a bit of a, an extra tool. And what I do like and what is very useful is these little level off arrows. This is what we want to see. And it's nice to have the little uh, donut here, the, the deviation bug showing us whether we're high or low. Something that will come later and is not implemented and probably a burning question for a lot of you is the VDEV for flying RNAV approaches. This cannot give you vertical guidance on a non-precision approach yet. That is a work in progress as well. So this will just work for your climbs and descents on the SIDs and stars and so on. But it's great to see and it's uh, it's it's just another example of this, this thing moving in the right direction. Here is a descent now. So I've suddenly told the airplane I want to go to Stansted instead, which is obviously closer. So it's now uh, decided that we are high on profile, about 1100 feet high. Um, so it's, it's gonna try and regain that. And here's our little um, zigzag line. That is using half speed brake, by the way. That expects you to use half speed brake. If you do, that is where you'll regain the profile. If you don't use speed brake, of course, you'll just parallel the profile, you'll sit above it. So we're 2000 feet high now. Um, and let's just compare that to what I expect. So 40 track miles, the box reckons. Um, and that's there, that's possible, 40 miles. I think we need 45, probably about 55 miles. So I would say we're high as well. So yeah, not bad, not bad. On the pro, uh, progress page, we get this page, VDEV, and it says plus 3,060 feet. So you can see here, 3,150. I'm not actually <laughs> gaining on that profile at all. I'm gonna need to do something here um, to help the situation. So I'm gonna go to thrust idle open descent. I'm gonna pull the speed. I'm gonna wind the speed up. This will be the quickest way down and you're still gonna have relatively good protection from an overspeed. Using vertical speed would not work very well here. So now, with the speed brake out, so idle engines, accelerate the, the speed, and there we go, 1840, and that's gonna start reducing 1780, and we're gonna rapidly get back on profile, and as we can see here, thanks to this update, we get a little green donut sitting beneath us, and we're diving down towards it. And you can see over here, our level off arrow is now expected to be Eight zero, some point downwind into Stansted. This is the glitch I was talking about where it might think you're doing more track miles because it's a bit confused about the speeds and so on. This magenta D here is the deceleration point. This is where the approach phase will activate. So activate approach phase is a key part of the approach in the Airbus. We must do it before we're on approach. Um, but the airplane will do it automatically and that's where it wants to do it. So it'll maintain the standard descent speeds it's got loaded until it passes that point. At that point, it will automatically activate the approach phase and hopefully um, you remember what happens then. It's going to, in managed speed, just start bringing the speed back to your green dot speed. And then as you put flap out, it will slow down to each speed accordingly all the way back to the approach. So that's where it's basically gonna start decelerating for the approach and you need to start helping it by putting the flaps out but it won't, it won't get too slow for you. But that is now drawn on there with the magenta D. And you can see it here named D cell. That is a D cell point. Speed limit exceeded, yeah, we certainly have. 
We are diving down to 80. <laughs> and now obviously we're way low on profile. So that's it for today's video. This is a huge, huge, huge topic. And I'm hoping that uh, by discussing so many parts of it, that it gives you a bit of an idea of why it's taken uh, so long to, to get this added. I'm sure that it's been an incredible amount of hard work by the Fly By Wire team. So thank you to them for their, their efforts. And of course, as ever, none of this is meant as a criticism. We're just discussing uh, where the situation is at the moment with this. The reason it's an experimental is quite clear. There are so many features in it that we need to keep an eye out for. And it is still our responsibility to manage the descent of the aircraft. And that is true in the real aeroplane. It does make not so many glitches but just there could be errors or mistakes in the way it's coded especially when it comes to constraints and so on it's our responsibility to catch those and be ready for any change in the arrival such as a shortcut or change in the circumstances weather and so on or winds this has been a big video there's a lot to take in here and uh, i i can't help myself if i start talking about a topic on this scale then I will end up running into all the different little extra bits, which I appreciate may not be for everybody. So what I might do is we'll look at this in the future. Certainly we might consider a simplified guide. And when this is more complete, we're gonna discuss it in um, more of a guide fashion as opposed to a big conversation that we've had today. Also, I'll be doing live streams with it. So if you want to ask a specific question, do subscribe, join us on a live stream and I can answer those questions live. Uh, which is something we do quite often and is a good way to engage and it's good fun and hopefully can get you your question answered. That's all then. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again in another live stream or video soon. Have a very good day. Bye-bye.